Bum, 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 Yay! Again, we don't have lyrics yet, but that doesn't mean I won't come along. Welcome to Port 4. I think today is Monday. Yes, sure. Why not? Uh, welcome back. We are going to uh, kick off a new week. We have a new theme week, and it is Bartending 101. What does that mean? You're going to find out. All right, let's walk down the hallway. Let's leave my desk, see what Keith is doing. Hope you guys had a good weekend. I, I didn't do a lot. Did some outdoor gardening. Took my dogs for a walk. That was about it. So here we are. And it's Keith. Hello. Hooray. Hello. Hello. All right, we're going to lock you into our locker in her. Okay. Success. All right. Um, I am ready for a drink. Okay. You you looked like you were ready for a drink. It's about drink theory, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna make one of my favorites. I'm making it half size. We're gonna be covering glasses later. I'm gonna be using a uh, six ounce stemless champagne for for twelve. It's adorable. And we're gonna make a Harvey Wallbang. Now I could make a screwdriver. Everyone knows what a screwdriver is. It's Salt and orange juice, and that's not really all that exciting and all that Boring. fun. Boring. Uh, I know. So, uh, we're kind of wanting to cover um, some lessons about layering. When you bartend, you work with a lot of things with different densities. So, some stuff really thick, stays at the bottom, things that are even lighter, move to the top. Throw an example for those out who aren't um, well, it, so familiar with densities of liquor. And this is something that's come up a lot because of the hand sanitizer stuff. Just, uh, not all liquor is the same. No. Alcohol uh, is not one thing. Well, so when we were doing martini week, um, there was a lot of times I talked about if I used to stir up the ingredient, I would want to shake it as opposed to if I used a bunch of like things with way less sugar. Right. That those would go ahead and stir and incorporate really easy. Uh, so that's why I'm going to add just a little bit of a fun garnish touch to this one to really describe it. Normally it doesn't go into one, but I actually want to start off a little bit of Martino juice and Martino cherry at the bottom of this. Probably will be kind of sad, isn't it? I'm gonna that, down on one more there. Looks, yeah, thanks for. Hmm? It's Monday. That looks like a Monday garnish. Let's amp this up to like. There's a Wednesday yeah, garnish. Is it Wednesday? No, it's Monday. I actually yeah. literally had to take a minute to go. Poop, what time is it? It's right. Monday. So I'm going to do my ice <laughs> first, then I'm going to do my ice. This is kind of fun. You build the whole cocktail in one glass. So build literally means what you think it does. Like We put it together. We put it together. Now there are terms that you'll hear a lot like float, sink. Uh, this, this is more of a build, although it will tell you it's a float. It really doesn't. So he just poured in the vodka that was... Mm -hmm. One part vodka. I believe in this little thing he used like an ounce and a half. I think yeah, I did. It's one a, and a half. It's a shot. So yeah. But I do one part vodka to two parts orange juice. Make mine a little bit stronger. So you'll see. I'm gonna get in on that. Oh, you'll see how it. that. Get, get in, in on, on that. Mm, 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 uh. You can kind of see, and at home you'll be able to notice it more, that that orange juice is gonna layer down in. That's called sinking. It's mm -hmm. sinking down in. And you can see the martino hasn't. There's this little red tint on the bottom. Again, so that's layered. Get down there. There we go. That's nice. And now this is going to be a a float that doesn't really float. The the more noticeable floats would be something with cream. I'm gonna actually zoom in on this too. So this is how you float something. You pour over the back of a pour spoon. over the back of a spoon, and it lightly goes on top. This is Galliano, by the way. Perfect. This, I would suggest, is a very specific, hello, give us how one second you? and we'll one be right over there. Right with you. So we pour the Galliano over that, that is called a float, and, and you can see really it, see. And what we mean by sink, you see it came down and now suddenly you can see those little cherries kind of yeah. mingling. So Keith is going to take that drink. I am going to take this drink, a wonderful Harvey Wallbanger, but adorably sized. If you make that drink, so we use vodka. If you make that, right you're welcome. I'm gonna flip this around while uh, Keith helps our lovely curbside to go people 
who didn't know that they volunteered to be on this live feed, but they did by showing up at four. Yay! Um, if you make that drink a Harvey Wallbanger with whiskey, it's called a Wally Wallbanger, which goes back to something we talked about, about the base ingredient cannot, it changes the drink, changes the name, gets really crazy. So that drink, that Harvey Wallbanger covered by adding the cherry, covered a sink, a layering, and a float. Those are three terms that when you're looking at cocktail books or look, looking at recipes, you'll see, and that's what they mean. So a sink is, it goes either in first or last, and it sinks to the bottom. When something says it's blushing, you'll see cocktails, like a sunrise is a blushing cocktail. That is because that red you put in last, and it fills up the color. A float is on top. The shot, probably the most common uh, and most drastic thing that you can float is in a shot called a brain hemorrhage. And you can literally float the cream and you can really see the difference in the liquor densities. And then layering or building, there's several drinks out there that their whole purpose is they look really pretty. And then as you tilt it, they all automatically kind of fill in there. So that is some very beginning bartender terms that you will hear. We will cover other ones about style of drink later. But if you have any questions regarding just those three terms, again, we taught you how to rim last week. That is float, sink, layer. And yes, sometimes it is really important. Not only does it look cool, so we'll take a look at that. Not only does that look really pretty, in a glass, but sometimes it is key to getting the flavors that way of how the drink is supposed to be made. So again, that was a Harvey Wallbanger, and it was, this is a six ounce drink. Normally to make what would be considered a full size one, that would be closer to 10 ounces, but we're trying to be responsible, it is Monday. We used one and a half ounces vodka, one and a half ounces Minute Maid, that is not a brand endorsement, that's just what we have. And then a float of Galliano. So a question just came in, how do you determine what will sink and what will float? And it is entirely, basically the viscosity of the liquor or the density of the liquor. For you at home, what would be real, for the novice bartender like vodka. That's really thin, very liquidy. Galliano, for those who don't know, is um, a liqueur. It is thicker, it's got more sugar. Usually the things with um, heavy sugar like our syrup or the maraschino cherry juice, something syrupy is gonna sink. Things that float um, are basically just means they're gonna be two separate layers. So Irish cream and basically anything else, if you float it, will separate. Uh, other things, our tonic syrup um, can actually be done as a layer and a separation. So. That's another one. Some of the other lighter liquors I'm trying to look on the on the bar. The cream is quite honestly one of the best things to do. And a lot of times when you have to float something, it is usually a cream or a heavy syrup. Luxardo um, is a maraschino liqueur. There's a couple of other maraschino liqueurs. Luxardo is kind of the premier. That one is often used in a sink and a float. Uh, the Tequila Sunrise is probably the one people know the most for something that sinks. Usually when you put it in last, it's just for color. And when you put it in first, it's for flavor. So that's, if you're just dropping in grenadine or even our tonic syrup, which we use instead of grenadine a lot, when you put it in last, it's just because it looks cool. Um, and again, it does look cool. And that's sometimes it's just about the way it looks. But that is a good question. Are there any questions at home? Again, this is, Keith Love the Harvard, I'm gonna get the link out of the way. Keith loves uh, Harvey Wallbanger. Uh, it is one of his go-tos. To be fair, he grew up in Wisconsin. There's a lot of Wisconsinites who drink Harvey Wallbangers. It's weird how these regional things develop with drinks. Um, they drink a different style of, you know, Brandy Alexanders are big up north. Don't know why, they're not down here. But different, different regions kind of have different drinks. And this is one of Keith's favorite, and it's, again, a good example. If you make this at home, which 
If you don't, I would quite honestly recommend Galliano. It's probably one of the only ones that I will 100% say you need as the brand. You can actually find this everywhere um, in various sizes. This actually is a 375. It's really pretty. Yes, uh, <laughs> the 70s were, this was a very popular cocktail in the 70s. And many a, many a boomer will uh, tell you many a, a disco story with a Harvey Wallbanger. We will actually go into uh, next week when we go to throwback week about how the 70s and 80s are known as the, the dark ages of cocktails. And we will go into that history more, but the 70s and 80s are not known for being great at getting us good cocktails. This is probably one of the more famous, and to be fair, ones that you will still find, although not in high quality, um, still find out there. The 70s and 80s are not known for their good drinks for whatever reason. Actually, I believe the reason is because recreational drug use was so new and high that cocktails were considered tame by comparison. So the point was uh, shots became really big in the 70s because it was uh, fast, crazy. You could do a lot of crazy stuff with it. But that's a little preview into next week. But this week, again, we're talking bartending 101. As Keith said, a little preview, this is a six ounce champagne flute. We did not have a Collins glass today, but we will show you a Collins glass tomorrow. I was letting them know how your family was really, really into this drink um, and how Wisconsin has a lot of like individual things, but why do you like this drink so much? Um, it, it was one of those ones, so my family wasn't like hugely into it by the time I was able to start drinking, but dad always had the really pretty bottle of Galliano yeah, sitting over in the corner. Beautiful bottle. And he had this, I mean, this bar was on, or this was on so many bars, lit up in some way, and if you get the big one, you literally can't put it anywhere No, useful. it's such it a tall up. bottle. That was their brilliant plan. Like, you can't hide this bottle away. It is in front of everything. So, just for those at home, what does this, and again, I said this will probably be the only thing that we tell you is brand specific. You have to use Galliano. Yeah. What does just Galliano taste like for sweet those at licorice. home? Sweet kind of licorice. Um, with a few other like spicy characters to it, and normally, I hate licorice. Like I don't, I don't. Yeah, I was like, you're not normally a no a big, licorice. No, things though. Absinthe is one of the ones that I love. Licorice, uh, Galliano, I, d I don't drink it neat. And then Dad told me to make one of these. You need these two things. One day, you do need those two to things. make this thing. That thing. Um, you also need orange juice. Orange juice. We had Minute Maid. Thanks, Jerry. Jerry brought us some. Uh, he did a porch drop off of some OJ, so um, we could make this drink today. But when you're asking why I, you know, love it so much, it's because it's just that much more complicated than just a standard yeah. screwdriver. There's something a, interesting about it. A screwdriver to me, again, there are drinks out there, and we'll get into it more later, but there are drinks out there whose purpose is to get a buzz or to take the edge off. And to mm. me, a, you know, any type of sunrise or screwdriver, the point is, Usually to take the edge off from the night before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I need a little bit of vitamin C, but <laughs> I need the... I need a little bit just to calm my nerves. Mm -hmm. I would say that this is one of those, also one of those thinking drinks. I'm not sure. I want to start drinking, but I don't know where the day is going to take me. I want to order. It, yes, a it is. Wall banger. Um, yes. And again, if you make it with bourbon, it's a Wally wall banger. What do you learn if you make it with tequila? It's a red spud. A Fud Pucker? Fud Pucker. Yeah. yeah, it's a Fred Fud Pucker if you make tequila, Galliano, and OJ. And again, that's just the fun of it's drinks. Fun to order. Uh, speaking back to Bartender 101, there are what we would suggest, there are just some drinks you need to memorize. Mm. Now, mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong, and I've done it before. You know, if you want to pretend you don't know and be like, yeah, give me one second, I got to go get something from the back and frantically look it up and you know on my day we did not have the internet no you had to frantically you had go to, through a mr boss yep you had to find and, the copy of mr mr possible. boston there is also nothing wrong with just saying hey tell me what to tell me how you like it that was always my go-to was saying well how, how do you make yours and then they would list off the ingredients now, when it comes to an old-fashioned oh you, you have to one, ask you have to ask people have seen like no what are you doing you need to muddle this or all that and Everybody's Someone so different. Someone they're old-fashioned that they either make it home or they went to their favorite bar over yep. and over and over. It always makes me like scared to be a uh, 
an air, like an airport or hotel bartender where everyone who comes your way has yeah. the very yeah. exact way that a regular haunt bar would do everything. We're going to flip you. Oh, no. Now I'm it's talking so to people. We need to go this way. You need to flip over. Uh, there. You keep putting me on this So, I know. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. So, yes, there are some drinks that you just need to memorize. And when and if you start working or... <laughs> oh my God. So that was really funny. Um, there are just things that you need to know. So at your bar, whether you're working or at your home bar, there your group of friends all like certain drinks, um, and they ask for the drinks that they know. Some of those you just have to memorize. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is as we've been going through this port four, there are things that I forgot that I memorized. And I was like, oh yeah, I know what's in that. I'm like, why Why does my brain, it clearly put it in the deep recesses of my brain, but mm -hmm. having worked in two entire, very different bar settings, again, mm -hmm. I worked at one, a college bar, so I know a lot of shots for no reason, and just bad drinks, I'm gonna be real mm -hmm. honest. It was about getting drunk drinks. Every college has a drink that like, yeah. they all wanna do yes. all the time. And those are the ones I knew. And then I moved into uh, martini and champagne bar, which is a totally different. You did a lot of daiquiri and what we will call punch. That, well, large quantity poorly drinks. Plating and um, the visuals. <laughs> the visuals of where I worked were unique. Yeah. Shall we say? Yeah. Right? And, yeah. There's nothing no, wrong with being unique and different. It was more about quantity. That's what my mom told me. <laughs> there must be a lot of it going on. So, so precious. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. But it was also a, a very much a shots bar. Um, so shot, 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 shot. No. No. And again, we'll get into the whole shot history next week. But so today, unless anybody has any other questions, um, we'll take a minute here for sec uh, questions. But today we learned. Oh no. we'll, we'll my phone. take as much time as yeah, we Yeah, if questions. we cut out, my phone just said we were on low battery. Um, what we went over today was building, layering, floating, sinking, and how that all works. Tomorrow we're going to talk about cocktail glasses. You may not think it matters, it kinda but it kind of does. does. Not on a lot of drinks. It, it actually made me sad about how I was making it. I know. Not in the right glass. It's still pretty. Yes. But also but the right glasses. There are the some there are some simply because like mm -hmm. I mean the sherry and the port glasses, it's because that's as much as you should have, period. And the brandy mm -hmm. snifters and the Glen Karen. The same for the martini. Yes, there are reasons for these glasses. Between Jerry and myself, we will show you the, the insane world. we will show you the No no no, that's too much. Oh, copyright. Bar glasses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you can use seven seconds of a song before it's copyright. Okay. All we're doing is encouraging that musical episode, you know. That. Yeah, I, know, I can't tell you how many times people are like, when's the musical episode? I was crooning Lawrence Frogs to the dog last night. We'll get there. <laughs> so today, yes, thanks for joining us. We kick off Bartending 101. Today we talked about basic terms that you're going to read um, or hear in drink recipes, the Harvey Wallbanger or the Wally Wallbanger, if that's what you're making with bourbon, mm -hmm. or the Fred Fudfucker, Fud if you make it with tequila. Uh, shows you a really good example of how different things, liquids, work together in a drink. Tomorrow we're talking about cocktail yeah. glasses, cocktail and we're glasses making... Glasses. We're making a fantastic cocktail tomorrow. It's on a sheet in it's my on office. A sheet that's, that's far away from us right now, but, but you'll I, forgive us. You'll forgive us, because I already posted the shopping list, so mm -hmm. if you go through that, you'll have it. But... I think that is it. Well, we got to do shout outs. We do have to do shout outs. We didn't pick our shout outs. We though. didn't do our shout outs. Pick them live. Pick them live. What I'm hungry for, um, which Euros caught my attention. So, oh. Soulard Euro is doing takeout or curbside. So, we want to do a shout out to them. Um, I think we did Sugar Fire, but I want to do another shout out to Sugar Fire because yeah. it's awesome. They did that uh, thing at the boathouse. Yeah, on they this did. Last weekend to help support people. So, definitely. Got to give them a go, and then all right, let me finish this well, sweet. What's oh, sweet. Mm. Um, is a. Uh, I was gonna say donuts. Strange yeah, donuts. donuts. Strange donuts. You Strange cannot go wrong. Strange donuts. All right, those are our shout outs for today. Make sure to support your local businesses. Uh, Keith uh, and I try once a week to do takeout. Um, if mm -hmm. you can do it more, that's amazing. Uh, if you can't, 
it's okay. Yeah, so um, like playing Iron Chef with the things left in the house. Yes, so. um, but if you are able to do curbside takeout, we highly suggest it. It is the thing that's keeping a lot of people going right now. Plus, I mean, how many times have a lot of you at home really cooked for two weeks straight? It's terrible. It's terrible. There's it a awful. reason we have restaurants. Um, so that is it for today, I think. Um, uh, I yeah. Think oh, yep. Oh, because yeah, okay. yep, we're that at ten percent. Oh my God, ten percent battery. So all right. Uh, stay healthy. Brain. Stay healthy. Stay well. Um, you know, we're getting pretty far into this. Don't kill each other. Patience. Patience. Drink be and be kind. patient with each other. Please, again, as always, don't panic buy. Don't hoard buy. We, we will get to yakis, but yes, I see oh, that yeah, they're yakis, delicious. Yeah. Um, yeah. Be right. kind. Be nice. And. Keep, Keep your spirits, spirits up. up. We'll see you tomorrow for Bye more guys. bartending. Bye. And now you get the awkward Zoom.